Hey folks, uh, this lesson is uh, the first lesson of 6-1 in our statistics book, so confidence intervals for uh, the mean. And it's really important when the standard deviation is known. So most of the time it's, it's not known uh, because it's a population standard deviation, but in this lesson it is, in this whole chapter it is. Okay, so, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's start with confidence intervals and definitions here. So a point of uh, estimate is a single value that estimates a population parameter. Typically, we use uh, we estimate the population parameter using a sample mean, and the sample mean is this x bar right here. You guys know that. So, for example, here here's a random, uh, and the key word is random right here. Okay, if it didn't say random, then we're kind of we're kind of stuck, and you need to recognize that. So, here's a random list, and you need to state that you you also know it's random. Okay, so later, you guys are going to take that uh, AP stats uh, exam. So here's a random list, and random, again, got to emphasize that, list of the number of hours worked by 40 employees uh, from several grocery stores in the country. Find a point of estimate of the population mean. Okay, so I'm passing out a uh, class set of TI calculators, TI-83, actually, actually 84 calculators, uh, and I'm going to show them how to calculate the mean. But anyways, the mean is you add up all these numbers. So... So the mean, which is X bar, this is called the sample mean right here, okay? This is called the population mean, mu. Sample mean is X bar. So we add up all these X's and divide by the number of numbers, and there's 40 of them, so they told us there's 40 of them, so we're going to add them all up, and we get uh, 29.6, okay? So the point of estimate for the mean number of hours by the grocery store employees uh, in the country is 29.6. Now, do you think um, uh, it, it's, it's exactly 29.6 in the whole country? Well, probably not. So the probability that a population mean is exactly 29.6 is, is pretty close to zero. But we can use a, an interval, which is going to be later called a confidence interval, to, to estimate our, our, our population mean, which is mu. So an interval estimates uh, an interval estimate is an interval or a range of values used to estimate the population. So even though 29.6 is, is not the population mean, it's probably close to it anyway. So... So we can use this point of estimate as a, a center of an interval. So then add or subtract what's called the margin of error, and I'm going to call that the MOE. Okay, so for example, let's let's say that the margin of error was 2.1, which means 2.1 hours. So, so um, we add 2.1 and subtract 2.1 from, from our sample mean, 29.6. So we're going to add that and subtract it, and we get... Here's what we think the population mean is if the margin of error was 2.1, okay? All right, so um, uh, so uh, um, uh, our interval would be this, you guys, okay? So if we add 2.1, we get up here, and if we subtract 2.1, we get down here. So our population mean is probably somewhere in here. How much probably? Well, it depends on our confidence level, whether it's, you know, 80% or 90% or 95%. As the, percent, as the percentages get larger, this confidence interval also gets larger. So, you know, if I put the confidence level right here and right here, then um, we'd be adding or subtracting a, a bigger or smaller number right here. So, Anyway, we'll talk about that as we get more. So the level of confidence, which is called C, is the probability uh, that an interval estimate contains the population parameter, which is our mu, our population mean. So assuming that the estimate, uh, estimation process is repeated um, over and over and over on a large number of times, okay? So from the central limit theorem, uh, in the last example, we had uh, n equals 40. If it's greater than or equal to 30, then the sampling distribution of the sample means is going to end up being normal. So the level of confidence, which is C, is the area under the curve between the critical values. Uh, uh, remember the z-scores that we were doing in um, the standard normal distribution table? So in my textbook, it was, um, uh, I think it was pages A17 and 18, or A16 and 17. I forgot. Anyways, so here C represents the percent of the area under the curve that, uh, that's normal between our negative Z score and our positive Z score. Now, 
let's pretend like this is um, you know, let's let's shoot for 80 percent okay if this is 80 percent then this is 100 percent underneath the whole curve so so this must be um, uh, 20 percent for the two tails so this has to be 10 percent and this has to be 10 percent because uh, we take one half of the difference so the area uh, at the end is one minus c both ends so each tail is going to be one half uh, one minus c right there okay so um, uh, so now let's uh, it, it, for example if if c was 90 percent okay so let's say this was 90 percent then this tail and this tail is 10 percent so that means half of that is going to be each tail. So this would be 5% and 5% uh, and five over here. So this is the 5% over here. And this is 95% for our z-score. Because remember, our z-score always gives us to the left of the value. So if we looked up um, uh, 5% right here, okay? So let's look up 5%. I don't know if you can see this small text. So... 5% um, is 0 0.05, 0 0.05 is right here, 0 0.05050 and 0 0.04947. So it's right in between these two guys right here. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, my z-score is going to be negative 1.6 and it's between 4 and 5, so negative 1.645. Similarly, 95%, the other tail, is between uh, positive 1.645, okay, 1.645, so it's right in between there, right there. So we get uh, our z-scores to be negative 1.645 and positive 1.645, okay. All right, so typically, you guys, we're going to be talking about the 90% confidence interval, 95% and 99% confidence, okay. So um, our z scores, well, we just found out that the 90% is 1.645. For 95%, it's going to be about 1.96. Okay, and 99% is 2.575. Now, remember, the bigger it is, and I'm holding my hands out, and my hands are out, you know, like parentheses around the 90. And then as soon as I do 95%, my, my hands go wider because I, I want a bigger confidence interval. Okay, so I got to go wider. My z score is going to be farther away. So, can you see that this is farther away from the zero than this one is? And then, when I go all the way up to 99%, it's going to be farther away. So, my z score is going to be much farther away or further away. So, so um, uh, plus or minus, but we'll use both of those for our confidence interval. So, now, if we use any other values, and, and most of the time we won't, um, uh, then whatever, if they ask you to do a different value than 90, 95%, 99.7%, or 99.7%, sorry, then uh, whatever that confidence interval is, it's um, each tail is always going to be one half minus uh, that confidence interval percentage. And then you look up the smaller values and then take the negative side and the other side is going to be the exact same. So so notice when we got negative uh, 1.645 and the other one was positive 1.645. So the 95% would be negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. Same with this right here. Okay. All right. So here, let's go. Um, uh, the difference between the points of estimate, uh, which is our sample mean, our X bar, and the actual parameter, which is mu, is called the sampling error. Okay. So the sampling error is our sample mean minus the population mean. In most cases, um, we're not going to we're not going to know the population mean because because let's say you're you're in a high school senior class and you wanted to know. Um, uh, what's the age of your high school seniors? Well, uh, you know, you, you might get like, I don't know, 17.3 years. I, who knows? Is it exactly? I, I don't know, but you, probably you won't know the population mean because you won't have time to calculate all the, all the, the seniors in the class. Okay. So, so um, as you're taking samplings, your sample sizes vary from sample to sample. So that's what this part says right there. All right, so, but we can calculate the maximum value of error, which is the margin of error, when we know the level of confidence in the sampling distribution. So we'll use those z-scores that we just talked about, okay? So the margin of error, which I'm going to call MOE, is the largest distance between the point of estimate and the value of the parameter it is estimating. So for population mean mu, when your standard deviation is known, now in the next chapter, 
the standard deviation is not going to be known and that's going to be most of the cases so it's all the same math you guys exactly the same math except we use a different table which is called a T score but but here we're going to use a Z score because the standard deviation is known so our margin of error is our Z score times our, our uh, sample standard deviation. That's what, uh, this is standard deviation right here, and this is our sample means right here. So, so our sample means standard deviation is that. Do you remember that right there? It's the population standard deviation because we know it um, uh, when it's known and divided by our sample size, the square root of our sample size. But these values have to be met, you guys. The sample is random, you guys. It has to say random somewhere. Also, you guys, um, uh, either the population is a normal distribution or, or um, because the central limit theorem, uh, our sample sizes are greater than or equal to 30. Okay, so it has to be met right there, and you have to state that, too, on the AP exams. So use the data in section A, which was that grocery store example, and find a 95% confidence level to find the margin of error for the mean number of hours uh, worked by the grocery store employees. Okay, and assume that the population standard deviation is 7.9 hours. Okay, if we didn't know that, we'd have to jump to chapter 7, which is a T score. We'll talk about that later. So because we know the population standard deviation 7.9, the sample, and we know that the sample is random. It did say that. I don't know if you caught that. And the sample size was 40, which is greater than or equal to, <laughs> greater than or equal to 30. Then our central limit theorem says we can go ahead and use our margin of error formula. So we got to find our Z score for 95%. I gave that to you. Um, and if you can't figure that out, then just look in your table for 95%. I think it's 1.96. It is, okay? And then, so this is going to go 1.96, and then our population standard deviation is 7.9, and our sample size was 40. So it gives us um, uh, this right here, and then uh, that's going to give us that, and then always interpret that, okay? So I'm um, going to be 95% confident. Uh, that the margin of error for the population mean is going to be about 2.4 hours. All right, you guys, if you are in my class, I'm going to assign you that right there. Take care.